Hello, I'm Bill LeMay, and thank you for watching Community Matters. We hope you continue to watch as we discuss issues facing our community and provide you with the resources and information needed to find solutions. Now, we've talked a lot on the show about shopping locally for goods and services, and today it's really kind of exciting because I've tried to grow food. I haven't been really very successful, but what is growing in popularity is gardening in urban areas. Our first guest today is Lisa Grayley Berry, and she is the chairperson of Raleigh Farms. And Lisa, it's great to be here. I guess Raleigh City Farms. Correct. Good morning. Right. Good morning to you too, Bill. Great to be here. Well, let's talk basics right now. Sure. What is urban gardening? Okay. Well, uh, Gardening, as we know, is as old as the world. I mean, people always grew things in the, in the ground. And how gardening has become more popular in urban areas is a function of people being more mindful of, of what they're eating, of, of growing things for beauty, um, and simply having the opportunity to be closer to the earth and doing things outdoors for exercise and all kinds of great reasons why we want to garden. Uh, with Raleigh City Farm, we are uh, an urban farm in occupying a one acre site at the corner of Blunt and Franklin Street in downtown Raleigh. And this is the, 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 was the brainchild of some very innovative visionaries who said, you know, let's ultimately set up a billboard for farms. You know, if we think of farms out in the country, we think of farmers with overalls, or we don't think about them. And we need to think more about farmers. We need th to think more about what we're eating. So how can we demonstrate urban farming in a downtown area was the, was the idea. Then we have this vacant space in a neighborhood that happens to be urban. And that really was the, you know, those ingredients of a desire to, to showcase farming in a vacant lot started this story of Raleigh City Farm. Well, and, and what do you hope to accomplish? Other than promoting farming, it, it goes beyond that, doesn't it? Sure. So uh, I guess we, we can kind of think of three E's. You know, let's think about, uh, okay. let's think about eating Should first. Should I take notes? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with E's. Let's, let's frame it with E's. Sure. Um, eating. Uh, mm. We need to think about what we eat. I love that. Right. So yeah. we always think about what we eat, but are we eating the right foods? And when we think about what our, how healthy our population is, how much we're spending on health care, I mean, there's so many reasons why we should be eating more healthy. Um, you know. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I so eating is, is basic, but then what we eat and what we eat and how we eat and, and how we know what we're eating, we talk about local. Uh, when you're eating something that is locally grown, you're not just supporting a local business, but in this case, you're supporting a local farmer. So it's, uh, you know, all down the food chain, eating healthy foods is a great idea. So that eating part, that eating local part of this framework is very important. Um, let's talk about um, engaging. So when we want to engage people on the farm to get them to see that food is grown in the ground, particularly children, you know, food is not grown in a package at a department store or in a, um, at Harris Teeter, uh, it is grown in the ground, and seeing how things are grown gives us a greater appreciation for our food. Um, we have, what did we say? We said engage, we said, uh, we, well, we said engage, we said eat, we said, no, educate is our, our mm -hmm. third E's. So we're uh, engaging, but then the, the question of educating people about what? We have a pollinator garden. Let's talk about pollination. Let's talk about how plants are actually grown how insects are an important part of, of farming. We have bees on the farm. Let's talk about how um, pollinators, bees are an important ingredient in our ecosystem. So there are lots of ways to educate people on the farm. So we want to eat local, we want to engage them in farming activities, and we want to educate them on the importance of farming. Well, that's very interesting. I mean, it really yeah. is. I'd, I'd love to go do that myself. Absolutely. Because uh, I, I could use that kind of education. But we talk all the time, especially in urban areas where you know, you hear of uh, food deserts, or you, you mm -hmm, hear of, sure. especially the, the urban areas are having a difficult time buying fresh fruits mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But it, you're right, it's an education process too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize the importance. How, how have they embraced it? I would say, I mean, 10, 20, 30 fold. Uh, when this was a vacant lot, it was 
transformed by volunteers. So from the very first, when the very first shovel was dug in 2012, and actually, so we have four seasons of growing. We had, uh, you know, the volleyball team from NC State come out. We had, you know, elders from uh, associated communities come out. Everyone came out in droves to support and build this farm. It was kind of like a barn raising, but it was a, a farm raising. Because it's one thing to, you think about, oh, I'll start a retail store. I mean, you, you start a store. Here you have, you had, you know, again, a one acre lot that had glass and, you know, soil that was not, um, you know, really able to be farmed. So the way that the community came together to support, first of all, the, you know, the infrastructure, which, which was amending the soil, and then it was building out what? We have um, a hydroponic greenhouse on site. We have a farm stage on site, which is um, both a kitchen, wash station, and entertainment area. So we've been having events on the farm. Again, uh, I'd love for you to see the, the, the farm because see seeing it is really um, the first step in understanding what kind of, how many, how much sweat, blood, sweat, and tears from volunteers was poured into this farm because, uh, and again, for me, I'm a neighbor, like, wow, around the corner, there's a farm that so I can walk with, to. What do you do with the food? Eat it. You personally? <laughs> yes. Well, to, well, well let's uh, talk about distribution lot, channels. Yeah. One acre. Right. That's, a, that's right. a pretty good chunk of land. Sure. Probably grow a lot. So, so let me let me speak to you about the model of the farm. Sure. And we've been hearing a lot. I mean, if you think about, let's think about art space downtown as a as an example of um, a space that artists share, shared um, space and shared marketing to create art. There's HQ Raleigh, which is shared space for entrepreneurs to mm -hmm. come up with ideas. So frankly, Raleigh City Farm is kind of like a farm incubator. And so we're incubating new farmers on this site. So currently on the site, we have three farm entrepreneurs, as we call them. So James Edwards is our principal farmer. So he's farming diversified vegetables in plots. We have something, uh, a, a farmer called Endless Sun Farms, uh, Matt Spitzer and uh, Chase Werner. They are growing hydroponic lettuce on site in a, guard, in a, a, a hydroponic greenhouse. It's remarkable. They use water and um, air to create beautiful uh, lettuce and uh, microgreens. Then we have Chris Rumbly, his Farmers Collective is actually a hub that is, here's a good verb for you, aggregating, Ooh, collecting like far beautiful fresh vegetables from Piedmont farmers to sell to restaurants in the urban core. Oh, neat. So that's a hub strategy. So again, three discrete farming entities on the site bringing fresh food either from the site or in Piedmont to, from Piedmont farmers into the local core so that restaurants can buy them. But we also have a consumer channel. So if you wanted to buy vegetables, the very freshest vegetables, you'd sign up for our farm share. It's called Community Supported Agriculture. So you buy 10 weeks of vegetables. Once a week, you go to the farm, pick them up. You got, you know, great. Now there's, there's eggs and milk too that's part of this, you know, aggregation of vegetables. So anyone can get the very freshest vegetables once a week. We have a farm stand on Saturday morning, so you can come to the farm, get you know, carrots picked right out of the ground uh, half an hour ago. So again, consumer channels, CSA and farm stand, and commercial or restaurant channels of distribution, all happening at Raleigh City Farm. That's, uh, and this is how it's, the cycle keeps going. I'm assuming this is where the revenue comes to continue this project. Right, so we are a nonprofit which means we have a board. I serve as the co-chair of the board of directors. So most of our revenue, frankly, comes from individual contributions. We throw events on the farm. Uh, we've had, we had a birthday celebration honoring birthday. We have harvest dinners on the farm because along with the vegetable sales, we're also, you know, as we speak to our threes, eating, educating, and engaging, we also have programming on the farm. So we've got uh, opportunities for groups to come in on Wednesday. We have programming that, again, teaches people about farming. We've got workshops uh, on a number of different activities that are farm related. So all of this is, is, is a great, you know, they're great ingredients for a healthy community. And so people care about that. People who care about healthy communities will support and contribute. Oh, it sounds so exciting. Yeah. I, mean, I really want to go down and be a participant yeah. in this. I need to get this knowledge. And mm -hmm. it sounds, well, for folks like me mm -hmm. who would like to, uh, sure. you know, sign up, get some more information, how do we do it? Sure. So, I mean, we are all over social media, and I'm sure you are too. So, if you followed us on Facebook, if you followed us on Instagram or Twitter, I mean, you're 
like totally on top of all of the activities that would be happening on a daily, weekly basis. Of course, we have a great website, so you'd go to the website, you would, um, you would click on the Urban Dirt new e-newsletter box, so you would be getting communication from us. So you can find us you know, virtually like at the snap of a finger. The best way to discover us, of course, is to come to the farm, walk on the site, and, and be a part of the activities. But there's all kinds of activities uh, and ways to engage. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers. We're always looking for um, in-kind uh, contributions. Ace, uh, Seaboard Ace Hardware just gave us a tiller. And we're always looking for ways to uh, continue to farm and do all these great programs, but spend as little money as possible to keep the farm going and potentially grow farms in other areas. I've always wanted way. to be a farmer. I mean, I really well, did. I've always wanted to be a farmer. And if yeah. you have, too. Yeah. You, this is a way to connect. Absolutely. Lisa, i got to say goodbye to you, but okay. thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Bill. All right. Don't go anywhere. More to come.